Okay. Welcome everybody to Sports Back Talk. Boy, big Holy crowd. Ringer. Big crowd. <laughs> this is our this is our, our our Christmas edition. Where's your where's your your Santa? I got I dyed my hair gray. That's about as all I could do. I, I did the best I could with okay. the red and uh, and everything else. So yeah. uh, awesome. Let's uh, let's start with the wild. Can we start can we start with hockey and see if this gets the show going in the, no, in I, the I, right we, direction? What? Is what? it a battery or battery? <laughs> Is it battery or battery? <laughs> I'm just trying to prove get a get a point here. What would you call it? <laughs> he laughs. <laughs> Okay, and I have no idea how old Lloyd is. I would guess he's right around 62-ish. And, uh, but if you are over the age of 65, in most cases you call it battery. If you're under the age of 65, it's battery. Okay, so you say... Like my buddy Junior Cullen, so you, you know Junior Cullens? No. Okay, he calls it battery. Right. Okay, he's seventy something. Right. Okay. Why is that? Do you think? Can I ask? What um, I, I don't know. I think they used the word battery a lot more back uh, okay. back in the fifties okay. and sixties than we do use it now. Okay. I mean, a battery to us is basically what starts our cars. We don't use them a heck of a lot otherwise. I mean, uh, but I don't know. It's just I, I I've watched how the word battery has grown into battery. <laughs> I don't know where we're going. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that either. <laughs> it's just. Did you watch the Wild? Well, I like to start out with irrelevance to, there, to get this show going. Well, there you go. So, yeah. did you watch the Wild Saturday afternoon? Did you yeah. have you gone over your bitterness and and watched? Yeah, yes. it's uh, you know, it, they are who they are. Right? They are who they are. Okay. You know, but but it was a different game. It was it was oh, drop the drop. Yeah, gloves. yeah. Sooner. Suter dropped the gloves. Yeah. I thought I thought Boudreau made great points. Suter should not have to drop the gloves with anybody. Okay. okay. And uh, she, I think Bill Peters is Boudreau's trying to throw shots at Bill Peters, the coach of Calgary. Because Bill Peters is is an idiot. Okay. And for Matt Kachuk to say, did you watch the fight? I did. Okay. Did Kachuk even throw a punch? I told my uncle. I said. Kachuk dropped the gloves, Dumba dropped the gloves, and I said, I don't think Kachuk got a sponge in. Dumba got in a few. A couple. Yeah. But Kachuk grabbed on. Now, for a guy who's calling out the wild, saying it was a dirty hit and I had to stick up for my center, okay, and, and grab the guy and not even throw a punch, that's gutless. You know, this guy's been doing this stuff for ever since he came into the league. Uh, he was going after Doughty of the L.A. Kings for a number of games. Doughty would, would absolutely destroy this kid. Okay, and there's Kachuk, mouth and bump and turtle, and every time Doughty wanted to fight, Kachuk would run away. And, you know, Kachuk's a punk. That's what he is, okay? Uh, he's nothing like his dad. His dad was a hard-nosed player who could put the puck in the net. And this kid has some skill, but uh, to me, he's way off guards. He's playing 1960s hockey. He doesn't get it. And to call out Dumba, and then what happened, because of him holding on, I think he separated his shoulder. It's okay. a lower bo upper body injury. Okay. That's either a so shoulder. Dumba, you think got hurt on the, in the yeah, fight? Yeah, in the fight, it's either a shoulder or a concussion. And I don't know what it is. It's upper body. Concussions yes. can be upper body. But I think it's his shoulder. I think it's separated, and he will be out uh, minimum two weeks or up to six to eight. So, again, all because of a useless old code of conduct sa saying, we had to go after, but but the Dumba hit was clean, okay. And and Calgary says yes, it was, but it was a bad time of the game. Well, you're down two nothing with a minute and a half to two minutes left in the game when he did it. Okay, game on still. I've I've been involved in a lot of games, unfortunately both ways, where uh, two goal lead wasn't good enough, and the Wild Kings easily came back and tied that. So don't say it was a pointless play because it wasn't. And and. Uh, yeah, this Kachuk. I, uh, I, I'm tired of players like him in the league, and uh, somebody needs to take care of him and, and shut him up. So I'll ask because I'm not a hockey guy. I, I didn't play hockey, I guess. So 
they went after Dumba. Yeah. Should we have reciprocated and gone after Giordano? Well, we, we did, but we didn't. I mean, Han Hendricks just kind of did a flyby with them, and they ended up dropping the gloves, but neither of them got a punch in, and and uh, it wasn't done right, I don't think. If you're going to go after Giordano, do it what Kachuk did, if, it's that, if that's what you're trying to do. And get it over with. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Giordano was expecting it. And Giordano did everything he could. He apologized. But to me, it's it's after the fact. He purposely tried to injure Koivu. Uh, you don't put your knee out in front of anybody. I don't care how long you've been in the league or how much respect you deserve. And then this Monaghan or, or Bennett goes after Suter like, what, what what is that? Well, you know I, I, what, what I, is I, that? And I was kind of in. Let's go. Let's go after a lot of this. You, Ringer, you so got it. Suter, because to me when I watched it, it looked like to me like Suter and him were yapping at each other, and then Suter went with the cross check in the back. Was there something before that? Well, there was the Dumba. They went after Dumba okay, again, that was and the, basically Suter just said I had enough, and, and, and but we don't like Boudreaux said we can't afford to have him off the ice. Uh, Calgary went in there. With, He's a bleeder. I know that. I don't get how, how Calgary was a team that had to go in and try to prove a point. We had Koivu on, on the on the mend. He could have lost his his knee for the year. I thought he did. Right. Yep. Um, I have no idea other than the coach, who's a again '60s guy, uh, basically saying let's go out and physically try to hurt these guys, and that that's what it is, Ringer. And and they brought in two refs, experienced refs, to try to try to end it. Our big guys, our guys that should have stepped up, Sealer, Felino, Hendricks, none of them guys stepped up. So they don't know you have Dumba fighting, you have Suter fighting. Uh, what, what good is that doing our team when you got your skill players all fighting and going to the box? So Calgary's number one in the Pacific Division. We lose two to one to them, and we uh, win twice last They're week. They're not going to win anything. Calgary's not going to win anything. I got a goalie who's, who's inconsistent in, in Mike Smith. Defense, uh, not real good. Uh, they got Goudreau, uh, uh, the Johnny Good. How do you pronounce it? Goudreau? Goudreau, I think. Yeah, a very good, very talented player. But here's my point with everything I'm going to end it. A lot of this goes back to the Eric Stahl slash on Goudreau on his hand, which broke his wrist, uh, which was a love tap. If you ever watch Johnny Goudreau, he wears gloves that come up to about here. Okay? where normal gloves are here. Our gloves, when we played, are up to here. <laughs> okay. So Goudreau got smacked here by Stahl, who's by far, I mean, he never tries to hurt anybody. Uh, did him a love tap, but it was a love tap big enough to break his hand or break his wrist, out four to six. This all goes back to that. It has nothing to do with the Dumba hit. It all goes back with uh, Bill Peters, their coach, and uh, you know, eye for an eye, tat for a tat. So one game left between these two teams, yeah. is it over? No, it shouldn't it's be over. It's not over. No, 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 no. Uh, in my opinion, Kachuk has to pay the piper. And I don't know who we got down the minors. If, 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 if Kachuk can say, I purposely went out and tried to get in a fight, why can't we bring up a minor leaguer from wherever? I don't even think he's in Iowa. I think he's somewhere in the East Coast Hockey League. Okay, bring him up and say, here we go. You've got to pay the piper now. Now, now it's your turn. Okay, you heard our guy Dumba. We're gonna go back at you with, uh, you know, Johnny Smolinski, who's has 800 minor penalties in the in the minors. And and uh, okay, Kachuk, is that how you live? If you live by this code, okay, now it's time for you to pay the piper. And don't be the surprise is you know, Boudreaux's old school. So don't tell him. I mean, it's on his mind. There will be so some. Until March to scheme this out. Yeah, they, they play one more time in March. Is it in Minnesota? I uh, think it's in Calgary. Okay, well, so correct, be it. I, I mean, it, ironically, Dumba's a, a Calgary Edmonton kid, too, and now he's out for whatever. And, and now we got Nate Prosser, who's Nate Prosser. So, how many goals is Ovechkin going to score this year? Because it's December. Well, 17th and he's got 29 already that, that's he's two plus months into the season he's got 29 goals what where's his, is, he, is he is he going for like 70 if players keep leaving him alone on his off wing he'll get he'll get 65 70. Yeah. Uh, they'll 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 uh, negate that i mean the teams will get smart enough where yeah but teams have known about eventually i know for, 
I know. Fifteen years. What, what? Yeah, you would think oh, he would. Get a... You would think he would slow down. I mean, his hair is as gray as mine and yours, and he, he's what thirty-two to thirty-five-ish. And uh, yeah, he keeps scoring. Uh, Crosby still does his thing, and uh, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say seventies out of the realm. Now they're saying he might even catch Gretzky's all-time goal scoring. He'd have to play about another seven years, but uh, wow. who yeah. knows? Who knows? What else from the NHL? Anything? What else from the NHL? Two teams that are kind of nosediving Car Carolina and New Jersey. Surprising. A team that's playing real well right now is, is two of them is Las Vegas and Vancouver. Okay. Uh, both of them uh, have won like four or five. Buffalo keeps winning. Boston with injuries keeps struggling. Uh, I assume that you saw Eichel's goal from... Saturday, I would get must have been Saturday. Oh, yeah. How about the, the assist, just, too? The one he just floated in from the red line and just he never hardly he never strided. And I don't know how he snaked that thing up to yeah. the top shelf like he did, but it was like wow. Yeah, he's a, he's a special player right here. He, he, a lot of times, it looks like he's what I like about him is, is his change of speeds. I don't think a, a lot of players do that anymore, and that's what makes a really, really good player a great player. And Crosby does it a lot, and Ovechkin really doesn't, but. Great players will have three, four different speeds. McDavid does it really good. I mean, from from really fast to like a explosive fast. But uh, uh, that's what's so good about uh, um, who are we talking about? We we're talking about Eichel. Eichel is uh, he, he he changes speed at times. It looks like he's not even trying, and then he, he has the puck on his hand and he does an amazing thing. And uh, uh, he made an amazing assist uh, last night too. With a, okay, behind, I didn't see the it was kind night. of a, a, going behind the net this way. He's a right shot, and as the goalie was falling behind the net, he did a pass back um, to Skinner on the backside and empty netter. But uh, yeah, a lot of special players in the NHL. Not so much in college hockey, but uh, the NHL is uh, very creative and fun to watch. Let's talk about uh, the Vikes uh, for yeah. Well, three. what do you think? Well, big win. We get, we we got the forty runs right. We did all what we could have, but nobody it, seems to be happy. What what, what, what <laughs> they scored forty one points and nobody seems to be happy. What who's who's you, nobody? What do people want? Who does, who's the nobodies? Like, you follow like, the Twitter feed? the Twitter world, and they're, well, they didn't look good, and they did this. No. And it's like, they scored 41 points. I think it's a team that was above 500. And the big complaint, last, all, all we ever hear about is how bad Kirk Cousins against the good well, he, team. He, he didn't play good. I mean, the, I mean, the quarterback doesn't have look so, at so, so so did Tom Brady play HS yesterday, too, because he only had 227 yards He's He's there. earned that. He gets the right to have a bad Absolutely. game. Absolutely. But Cousins, did you see? I mean, that, that interception that he threw. We're up 21 nothing, and Cousins throws that pass. Yeah, I didn't see the pass because I was driving home still from the cities. I mean, Paul Kavan, he could have made a better pass. All right, so I'm gonna, you were watching it on TV, I assume. Yep. I was listening to it on the radio. Pete Bursich gave, gave Cousins a Clear. He it was not his fault. Well, of course, he's sitting next to Paul Allen. He's it was not allowed. Completely the receiver. He's fault, sitting he next to Paul Allen. You're not allowed to cut down anything about the Vikings. What they do. So Pete versus wants, fault. Pete versus wants to keep his he job. Keep, no, he went after the receiver and said the receiver no. didn't run the right route. No, didn't run it the right. No, way. that's a cop out. Okay. He, the, the route wasn't even a route. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, what, 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 the, so the, that mean the, the receiver was supposed to run a well, didn't? It was basically a flare, or a small little screen, and and it wasn't there. So what do what do most great quarterbacks like throw Brady do? No, you throw it at the the well, player's foot. Yeah. yeah, at least that's what I used to do. What? Running the high strung offense. Years ago. Yeah, running the high strung offense that I used to run, but. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I thought it was a bad play, and it changed momentum for a while and uh, put put Miami right back in the game. Okay, so we ran for 205 yards yesterday. Yeah. Is this offensive coordinator or no. is Miami just that bad? It's a little of both. It's players doing their jobs, Ringer. You've, you've brought this up to me a number of times, not even physically or saying it, just your eyes tell me. You know, the, the line, offensive yeah. lines block – you know, there's going to be holes, and if there's holes, Delvin Cook and even Latavius Murray can get through them. But uh, that's all it is, 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 is doing what you're supposed to do. And, and uh, I don't care who, what offensive coordinator you got. 
Okay, it's a running player, passing player. Do your job, you know. So I, you know, he, whatever. So the Vikings went in Detroit on Sunday. Oof, da. You know, I, I was listening to a show today on, on Mad Dog with Sports. Uh, okay. It's XM82. Uh, Again, the, the, that was away from the falls today, so I couldn't listen to my own radio station. But um, So I was listening to that, and they said the Detroit game for Minnesota, winning in Detroit is going to be tougher than beating Chicago at home in the last week. Well, for two Chicago's reasons. Chicago's not going to be playing anybody. Yeah, that's one play. reason. The other reason, the Vikings are playing at home, and they're a different team at home. Detroit, this is their Super Bowl. They will do everything they can to beat the Vikings. I don't know if they have the offensive weapons to do so. I mean, you got Zach Zenner as your main running back. Uh, uh, things can't be good in Detroit. There's a possibility Kieran Johnson could be playing, but it looks like Zenner and Blunt and uh, a guy by the name of Theo Riddick will be uh, manning the running back crew. But Vikings should win it. Do I think they will? No. I think they lose this. Just, you know, <laughs> being, being a Minnesota fan is hard work. <laughs> It is. Am I right? Seriously. I mean, it is hard work, you know, putting up with all the agonies of defeat. I mean, instead of that little skier that goes down on the wild world of sports, that then the agony of defeat, they should just put up a great big state of Minnesota and say, and the agony of defeat. Am I right, Dan? Absolutely. I mean, don't even throw that skier anymore. I don't even know why the world of sports is even on anymore. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, just put the state of Minnesota up there and the agony of defeat, and everybody will understand. So, I am wound up today. You are. So, if, so if Minnesota loses to Detroit, do they still make the playoffs? Wow. Uh, boy, I guess if Washington and Philadelphia both lose, but Philadelphia can't lose with Nick Foles, so they're going to win out. So um, I look at it this way. It's, I think it's Philadelphia's uh, the spot to get. I, I think they're going to win it. Okay, so let's talk about your Nick Foles replacement or the replacement for uh, guy. Yeah. You're, kind of, you, you're always after these guys who are injured. They, 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 they're no good and whatever else. Carson Wentz, we get to crunch time. He's injured every year. What's I deal? I never went after Carson Wentz. I know you did. He's I, got I a broken you, back. I want you to go. Well, the doggone coach is saying he still might play. Which part of broken doesn't he quite understand? But he's always injured. This is this is Miguel Sano. This is Byron Bucks. Yeah. He's always injured. So. I think it's great because I get the pleasure in some other city or town finally having something like this happen. You know, we always get it. I. I, I, I understand. I, I, I get, I'm but I think it's Philadelphia's division to win. I, I think they're going to get it. You think they're still going to win the division after Dallas yes. late, your Dallas Cowboys laid an egg yesterday? Yep. And what, what the heck and was that? Boy, boy. 23 to nothing? It, it's, Zero. It, it sounds like Dallas didn't really care that much. They don't, Amari Cooper the week before. What do they got next week? Uh, it's Tampa Bay. I don't know. So they win that game, they're, they're in, and uh, they need to lose their last two, which is not going to happen. So uh, they're just, uh, you know, they want to win their win it at home, I guess. It's a good beer. We shall see. I, 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 yeah, so were you, were you surprised? But Philadelphia would be the last wild card, and in the AFC, Baltimore would get in as the last wild card. Okay. So Seattle's in. We don't. Seattle. Even though they lost yesterday to San Francisco. Isn't that something? I mean, that's that wasn't even close to being the same team. Why? No. Why? I, you know why? Yeah, I know. Because I know. Seattle was playing Minnesota. <laughs> and everybody plays their best against a Minnesota team. It was San Francisco for crying out loud. San Francisco had three wins coming in. They're, they're going for draft picks, and they go ahead and knock off the Seattle Seahawks. So the Seattle and... Philly are in, and then it'll be the Chargers or the Kansas City will be the wild card. Uh, Chargers will be the wild card. Chargers will be the wild card. You heard it here, folks. Now. Uh, Pittsburgh's going to go out and uh, knock off the Chargers this week. Or, no, Baltimore's going to go out and knock off the Chargers this weekend in, in L.A. Okay. So that'll end that. And then uh, Houston will get in, of course. Uh, probably has the number two seed, but they're going to get beat by Philadelphia. So that's another notch back. New England should win their last two against the Jets and, and Buffalo. So I think uh, New England will still probably get the number two. 
Should Bill Belichick be worried about his job after losing two in a row? He's the best quarter, best coach in all of sports ever. And he's the Why would he chief worry? too. But anyway, I digress. Should he be worried about his job? No. no. He lost he's, two in a row. He's the best coach ever in any sport. Anybody, any I saw Tommy Lasorda. Hey, Tommy Lasorda was at the, the ship. Tommy Lasorda was at the football game last night, the Rams game. Ninety-one years Florida. old. Look great. Could could he even see the field? <laughs> no. Remember, remember when he was? Jeez, it's Tommy Lasorda. I love you, Tommy, but come on, man. Anyway. Yeah. No, Tommy Lasorda, ninety-one. Can you give him a TV type? He looks good. Maybe. Yeah, he looks good, Tommy. What were you just saying? Did I remember when Tommy was? I cut oh, remember when he was third base coach and and. <laughs> a ball came at him and he, <laughs> and he the all started. Game. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as bad as watching Zimmer getting hit by Pedro Martinez. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, what, how'd your fantasy team do yesterday? Win. Win. Beat Rich Rudd, who, of course, I don't know if Rich could ever beat me in fantasy football. Rich I don't know if Rich done. watches this show. But I'm I'm gonna maybe make a point of him to watch it. But him and Billy Germain, they throw a they throw a 58 at me. Like 58 points is like, I mean that's that's bottom of the barrel. So I, I my players didn't perform up to capable. I have Thielen and Kelsey and and. I mean, oh, oh. Because I know you know the stats because I don't on yeah. this one. Oh, Thielen's stats yesterday received. two catches, 19 yards. What's going on? His last six games, he's been over 100 yards one time. Do you think him and uh, Cousins are... Uh, I, I don't know. I, you know, they, uh, there was some words going back and forth the last game in Seattle, but, uh, boy, you would have thought it would have been the other way around, that he would have spoon-fed him. Uh, is Steelen getting separation? Or is he big enough to get separation? Well, he's a tiny guy. Is he hurt? And I'm asking, uh, I, I don't know, is he nicked? He's, he? he's been limited in a lot of practices, but uh, I thought Diggs was more hurt than he was, according to the, the yeah, pressers. Diggs, and Diggs didn't look too bad. Diggs looks me. good, and it's Aldrick Robinson. I mean, geez, uh, how many times? I mean, they went to Thielen deep once yesterday, but they just don't seem to be going to him at all in, a, in, a, in bigger patterns, and uh, I don't know what's going on. And I just want and like I said, maybe we don't see it so much because you don't see it, but are they? do they have defenses, do they have – Somebody on them and somebody kind of zoning them up a little bit. Well, yeah, Phil, there's against Seattle. I, rumor had it, which is, makes you even more mad, is they were double teaming both Diggs and, and Thielen, which should have made somebody wide open. Kyle Rudolph? For Kyle Rudolph should have had a game, or whoever that third receiver is. It should be Aldrick Robinson all the time. They shouldn't even put Treadwell out there. I mean, he can't get open with nobody watching him. <laughs> So what place are you in in fantasy with two weeks remaining? I'm in second place. The worst I can finish is third. So I get a first round bye in the playoffs automatically. It's uh, between me and Jeff Mesh for second. Uh, I do have the tiebreaker on him. So uh, my, my, what's that called? Um, magic number is yep. one. Magic so I either got to win one more or he has to lose one more. And I got second. I do not think I can win it. Uh, Michael Thomas gets 47 yards tonight. Team Davis is our champion. And that would be Todd Bush from Napa fame. So uh, that would make me happy if I'm not going to win it. Uh, nothing against Jeff Mace because he has won it before in Wade Friend. But uh, nothing more I'd like to see than Todd Todd Bush win our league. There you go. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> where we go next? Well, where could we go? Bowl game. We got Bowl City Bowl. We got... Uh, a bunch of bowl games. Uh, fight, or, or Gophers are four-point underdogs against Georgia Tech. And, and I'm sure all these Minnesota kids are extremely happy they get to go to Detroit over the holidays. Yeah, I'm sure. The six of them were so happy that they decided to get suspended or something, I heard. what? Yeah, six of them uh, not sure of what the allegations are because they can't really say. But yeah. uh, some illegal stuff, obviously. They, stuff they shouldn't be doing. And... Uh, of, of course, they're going to get caught, and uh, again, that's that's another thing. Why does this stuff always seem to happen Cause it, uh, after the regular season? College athletes, I mean, never think they can get caught at anything. Sure, uh, true. It's uh, you know, there's only you know, you, you look at this Easton Stick who quarterbacks uh, uh, North, North Dakota State, State <laughs> and uh, that kid's leveled. He he gets it. He. He understands, even though he's at a smaller <coughs> college and university, that 
he's in the public eye of everybody, and he knows that. He gets that, and he's been taught by Carson Wentz, and and that's kind of how you get taught as you, you you grow and mature as an adult. I assume you watched the Bison on Friday night. Uh, yes, I did. And dominating, just just too good. I mean, so, I mean South Dakota team State team did everything team they that could. Only beat twenty-one seventeen. Yeah, in the season. yeah, and South Dakota State had a good quarterback and a good running back, but their defense could not compete against. Uh, the Bison defense is just that much better uh, to go against, and um, I, I thought Stick was awesome. He, he's running the ball a lot more than he was throwing it, and uh, his stock's going up, Ringer. He, he could be top, I would say, in the fifth or sixth round okay. uh, for a second-tier college. So I, I think he's got a shot. He's 6'2". He's got decent size, not not great size. He's got a really good arm. I, I watched that quite a bit over the last two weeks, and uh, I think he could be a nice backup somewhere. Did you watch any of Eastern Washington on Saturday, their opponent in the championship game in three weeks? I did not. I didn't know what it was on or where it was at. Well, you or... realize that their, their field turf is about the color of my shirt. Oh, then I might have glanced at it. Yeah. Because I saw a big red... Yeah. And when you turn it on, you got to do this with your eyes. It's like, okay, yeah. I should go get my... Where is Eastern Washington? Somewhere east, Spokane? I believe it is in Spokane. Because that's where Gonzaga is? is? No. Gonzaga or Zaga, however you want to say, I believe is also in Spokane. Okay. I think that is correct. So, yeah. the question is... Does Eastern Washington have a chance? Because we're not no, going uh, to have a show before then, so we might as well get that out. There. One game, one, you know, I don't, they don't give point spreads for these games, but um, one game, uh, chip chair and a chance. Uh, I would say if they played ten times, the Bison would win nine of them. So, uh, of course they got a chance. Okay. Not much of one. Not much of one. So we kind of got to the Gophers and we went away. They're four-point underdogs. Yeah. Do they win? Uh, I, I have it as a no. Lloyd, Gophers won the uh, bowl game. He's shaking his head no way in heck. Now, wait a minute. What if I give you the four points? Will you take the four points in the Gophers? He won't even take the four points in the Gophers. Now, there's a Gopher player. I don't know what what position he plays, offensive or defensive line. One of the one of the two. He's not playing. And they're not playing because... They're, what round are they projected? Fifth? Seventh round? Unbelievable. I didn't even hear about this. You know, we got two guys who are not going to play in the bowl game because the they got to play the, the they, they got to get ready for the NFL draft. What, as a coach, how do you react? Of course you got to pat the guy on the back or you're going to lose future recruits and say, I understand, but my goodness, I mean, shame on them guys. I hadn't heard this. That's you know, if you're playing to not get hurt, why did, you why did you ever play the game? Isn't that happening all over? It is. It is. It is. It is. It's a great point. Exactly. You know, it's happening all over. Ohio State's probably having five or six players not going to play. Okay? Uh, to me, it's, it's wrong. Uh, I get it. Again, <laughs> welcome, yeah, welcome to the future. We we got to all you know. We got to realize the future is, I don't know. I, is I, where I, we're I, at. And, I don't uh, know if I'm all for it myself or not. But geez, please, what would you do, Ringer? A player comes up to you in, in high Here's school. Your final paycheck. Yeah. And, and no, no, they're your coach in high nope. school. At high school level, turn your stuff. In. I'm saving myself for uh, hockey season. Turn I got a big year in. coming up. Okay. Bring your stuff in. Okay. I agree. I'm, I agree. I'm, done. I'm, I'm not putting up with this. You, no. You, you, you played the game. You played all season. Now I got to bring somebody in who's not ready, who whatever, because you're above the whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So he's doing what he wanted to do. Yeah. Okay. And that's the same thing with the goal for a football player. But again, who? I would just again, this kid would absolutely destroy me if I said anything to his face. I, I would just tell who do you think you are? And seriously, okay? You're, yeah, obviously our program doesn't mean anything to you. You, you can see yeah, that same. degree you're going to be walking out of, out of our university, okay? That could be your future ticket if you don't, if you get hurt in your very first practice in the NFL, which can happen. That that piece of paper you just got from the University of Minnesota is going to help you get a job, okay? And you basically are telling them, I don't need you. That's 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 an issue.
That's an issue. So I, I wouldn't want to be cool. I see the number one running back from Kentucky declared for the NFL draft as well. He's playing in the Citrus Bowl, and he's playing in the Citrus Bowl. He's and where are you going to get hurt more often, in the running back position? Well, the linemen get hurt a lot. They get hurt and rolled up on. They get rolled up on more than any player on the field, there's no doubt. But good for the Kentucky kid. I would like to see him and talk to him and say, get on the news and get out there and let people know you're playing. That's the guy I want on my team. Okay. What else? Where, 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 where? Questions. Lloyd, what do you got for us? What do you think of the basketball team? The uh, men have looked good at times, uh, frustrating at other times, like they do a lot. Um, I, I, I don't, well, when Curry comes back. Yeah. Will that help or will that hurt? Yeah, will that help or will that hurt? That's a great way of saying it. Is that going to screw up the chemistry that they've got going so far? Um, give them more depth. It'd give them more depth. I agree. That's a, that's a good For point. fouls because uh, Murphy gets in foul trouble. and yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll see. I, I, I still think, what, maybe like an 8 and 10? Big 10 record? Yeah, I got them a little better than that. Yeah, you're gonna get them over 500. Oh yeah, I, I think so. And and the only thing they're missing, as we were saying, Isaiah Washington was gonna, you know, leave. He goes out and has like 14 apples and you know 15, 16 points and has a great game. So, but Petito did come right out and say, every night I just don't know what I'm gonna get out of Isaiah Washington. So. It, it's confusing to him. They still need a pure point guard. Women's basketball team. When do they play next? Huh? When do they play next? They must play one more time here this week, I'm going to guess. But then probably right away, probably like by the 30th, okay. I would guess with the Big Ten uh, season. I do not know for sure. Okay. I know uh, one of my high school buddies this weekend after I – Posted a picture from uh, the Target Center on Thursday night. Said, well, when are you going to come down and start supporting the Gopher women's basketball team? And I said, when they can show me that they can win in the Big Ten. Okay, I know they beat Syracuse and they beat Boston College and they beat all these teams, other teams and ranks. And but they got to do it in the Big Ten. And uh, I know Waylon seems to have them going in the right direction. I want to see it happen. I, talk to me on February 1st. If they're still playing good basketball at that time, I, 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 I mean, I've, I've always supported go for basketball, but I might get on this train and say, okay, I think they got a chance to make a Sweet 16 run or maybe make an Elite Eight, but I just, I don't, I don't see them competing with the Mississippi States and the South Carolinas and the Notre Dames and the Connecticut. They're not, they're not even close to that level. And, and until you get close to that level, you're just, you're, you're kind of a second tier. You're like in the NBA. Yeah. I mean, you're not the, you're not the Warriors, and you're not whoever. So. But Waylon is a draw. Waylon, uh, she a draw. got two high-end recruits. Uh, she's I'll getting two when, more. I'll believe it when they're wearing uniforms. Yeah, right. we shall see. But uh, definitely a, a, a draw. So um, as far as the men, yeah, I see a little better team, but uh, um, just they're going to struggle with lacking a point guard. You know, just Amir's coffee seems to like I don't know what I am and. He likes to shoot the ball, so he likes and he's ball. good at it. Uh oh, we're in trouble now. He's got now. a big piece of paper tonight, folks. Let a rip pop. Let a rip. All right. Favorite uh, sliding hill as a kid. Favorite sliding hill as a kid. Well, I didn't grow up in this area, so I did. We we had a, we had a we lived on the St. Louis River uh, where I was from, and we had a hill that went down and down like that, and then and then down onto the river. And the, the goal was to see if you could get all the way across the river. We'd have to usually build a ramp, take a piece of plywood down, and get the snow banked up around it and, so that we could get out on the river so we didn't kill ourselves. So, yeah, on inner tubes, of course. And then you had to take the water down there and ice it down so you get the tubes uh, going with the old tractor tubes. So. Yeah, there used to be, uh, where Kerry Park Arena is, there used to be a hill there. Um, probably the one I... Was on the most. Say as a, say, there was a hill yeah, there was where Cary Park is. There used now. to be hills there built on, built by, because back then we got a lot of snow, so they put the yeah, snow. Yeah, not like these days. Yeah, so then probably Bronco Arena. Uh, they always had a pretty good, good area, huh? Suicide Hill. Suicide Hill. Which is, I've. Out by Island View. All the roller coaster hills up there. That would be a road trip. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> it's hard to explain to mom and dad to jump in the Rambo at seven years old and say, yeah, it took an hour and a half to warm the car up. But uh, I, I heard about Suicide Hill. Um, as you can see by being here, I have never been on it. Good question. It goes into the lake. No, I haven't seen Kathleen for a while. She was the Kathleen's going down. Oh, really? They're far on villages. Okay, yep. Like Glass Hill, that goes down towards Island View. It goes that way towards Charles Bay there, right on the lake. Okay, I know exactly where it is then, yep. We used to go skating on the lake, which was pretty cool. That leads into my second question, favorite outdoor skating rink. Famous favorite one, I had two. But I would say my favorite out of the two of them, A Street or 11th Street, I liked A Street because we had the whole, <clears throat> there was a family called the Hans. It was Jimmy and Michael Hahn, and we would have a tournament game every night, and we gave away pucks to the MVPs, and uh, there was like 60 kids on the ice at once, and boy, if you got the ball and held on to it for more than a, two seconds, you were doing good. But it was just amazing. I mean, we had so many fun games, and uh, so A Street, A Street Rink by far would be my number, my favorite. Built this, the rink on the street. Well, no, it well, was. There's the rinks there right now. Okay. Okay, we're well, eighth, eighth and what? Eighth and eighth about? Eighth and seventh. Yeah, right there. Yeah, no, and the funny eight, part, eight and 13, yeah. you could be at the rink and everybody came at their time. Like me and my brother Gerald were there about 4.30 and here you know, you'd see Charlie Dalton with his stick over his shoulder with his skates on his stick. You know, you put your skates on your stick and he would see him walking in about five. Every Kevin Gordon, Todd Gordon, all these guys, you know, they all came at the same time every night and it was magic. It was pretty cool. You had one growing up? No, because the only place we skated was on the river. So, that, and I probably, I, get, I would say I have skated on skates a dozen times in my life. So, I, I don't think I can answer the question. I don't, I don't have enough data. Good Our question. Favorite snow day as a kid? Uh, favorite snow day of the what? As a kid. Growing up, you know, favorite snow day. School's canceled or... And what oh. we did on those days, or? or the favorite thing that you did, favorite memory, or you know, you guys are gonna stop. Okay. I can't remember now. Well, I got, I got mine. They usually have. It was always uh, alley hockey, and you built your goals out of snow chunks, okay? Because we couldn't afford anything else. So you did your snow chunks, and and you played hockey and uh, probably eight to 12 kids at every game and there wasn't much room again and I think that's where a lot of creativity and hand-eye you, you didn't get snow days in International Falls back in the 60s No, we did. We just skipped school. <laughs> <laughs> so, so those were, those were like I this. We had the Saharas, the Pulowskis, uh the Tussos, uh I mean the Raboins, uh, Andersons, I mean just uh, I remember all the neighborhood games, and, uh, uh, and it's kind of funny in, in that all the cars that went by, that part of the deal was you tried to snag them as they went by, or, or worse yet, that Mr. Guy you didn't like down the street, he would try to run over your goalposts on purpose because he hated kids and told <laughs> that he, that was his alley that we were taking up space in. And so, again, all those little mischievous, fun little things and uh, brings back lots of memories. Usually if it was a snow day, usually it was because it was so cold, and that means on the dairy farm, that usually meant the water pipes were froze. Work. So if the water pipes weren't froze, that was a great day that you didn't have to go out and, and work on the water pipes. That was, uh, that always seemed when those days happened, there were, something was broke, and we didn't necessarily well, depends, do yeah. anything fun on those days. It was a day where Dad said, oh, I got the kids at home, let's go get some work done. It all depends where you grew up and you know where you lived, and so, that, well, that would decide yeah. that, I guess. But uh, what else you got? Well, I'll do two more. Then. Two more? Just oh, right. just two? Well, I got more. But I know you do. <laughs> uh, favorite bobsledding team? The one with Herschel Walker. <laughs> <laughs> the, the team or favorite? I like the Germans because they always had the coolest sleds. They, they had, had the, the movie Cool Runnings. So. Oh, Jamaicans. Jamaicans. Had the, had okay, the, yeah. yeah. Had a good movie. Now that was a true story. Yeah. Okay. John Candy, of course, was in yeah. it, and that was perfect casting. And and uh, 
bobsledding. Yeah, bobsledding's, you know, what do we see it? Once every four years, right? Kind of like yeah. figure skating as well and gymnastics. Well, we figure skating can see a little bit more. Yeah, awesome. but yeah, you got to go to the ice capades, but I, I don't really watch it too much. I prefer, I prefer skeleton, though, because you go down head first, and that's the only way. If you go sliding down a hill, you should always go head first. See, there's a, that's a made-up sport. No, it's like not. all these things that's, are made that's up. The way, that's the way the men do it. Go down head first. You okay. don't go down with your feet first. You go head first. What happened is so kind of... You smack, you smack, and yeah. It's kind of like the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. It was made by accident. Some guy got on the luge, was going backwards, his <laughs> thing flipped. Next thing you know, he's going forward on it. And then one of his buddies says, boy, I'd make another sport. And we could give away a gold medal in it. Sure enough, it's skeleton. <laughs> They, they have to, half the sports in the Olympics are made up. They have to be. I mean, it's ridiculous. Water polo, really? Let's let's swim around in twenty foot water and 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 what do you do that? Tread water. Tread water for for a two hour game, really? Gosh, what's the point of that? All right, when's the next show? When's the next show? It'll be Monday, January seventh. The night of the national championship game between Clemson and Alabama. Alabama, Alabama will win that he's one. Right. And, and, he is right. Uh, it was, I think it might be only be the second time tonight he was right. So then any New Year's <laughs> resolution? Oh, I'm going to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good one. I, I agree. No, no New Year's resolutions. I don't believe in the New Year's resolution. Uh, it's you got to do it when you got to do it, and waiting yeah. for waiting for a specific day is. Yeah, there's a big day coming up though, on Friday. The twenty first. And what happens on Friday the twenty first? Your birthday? No. Shortest day ever. Christmas. There we go. The days start getting longer. It's just a psychological thing. You know, it's like, gosh darn, I just gained a half a minute today. Was that winter solstice? Or? Yeah. They, they they believe it called the solstice. Yeah. It's, uh, I thought he was talking about the Muskies and the Bronco hockey, boys hockey. And that Friday is on Friday, and where's that at? That'll be at Bronco Arena, 730 Bronco start. Arena, and uh, yeah, Broncos, get get down to the arena, and if you can't, listen to it on the radio. It'll be uh, good, fun action. And both teams are pretty similar yeah. in that yeah, they, a lot of team speed, not a lot of big players, and you know there's, there'll be some physicality, but both teams are really not meant like other Formal rivalry games with Fort Francis to be a real I, physical yeah, game. I see, I, I see where you're going. You, you, you want to make a pre I'm just kidding. I'm know. not going to make predictions. We, uh, we, we, yeah, the the Broncos will be playing their two, second game in two nights. I wonder if how much. Who they the, play the night they before? They play hitting Chisholm the night before on Thursday in Bronco in Arena. Bronco Arena and That'll and be Monday. straight time. The, the Broncos will be win that wow. game in straight time. So I, six, I said winners, that after the last six two winners the last time when they played back on yeah. December seventh, and Mike is saying on the twentieth. No. It'll be running time against Italy. So that's why I don't think Friday will make it a big, because uh, okay. they'll, uh, they'll be well rested. That's okay. all we got. Anything else? Don't take us too serious. Thanks, everybody.